Once, when I was six years old, I saw a magnificent picture in a book called True Stories from Nature about the primeval forest. It was a picture of a boa constrictor in the act of swallowing an animal. Here is a copy of the drawing. In the book, it said, boa constrictors swallow their prey whole without chewing it. After that, they are not able to move, and they sleep through the six months that they need for digestion. I pondered deeply then over the adventures of the jungle, and after some work with a colored pencil, I succeeded in making my first drawing, my drawing number one. It looked like this. I showed my masterpiece to the grown-ups and asked them whether the drawing frightened them. But they answered, frightened? Why should anyone be frightened by a hat? My drawing was not a picture of a hat, it was a picture of a boa constrictor digesting an elephant. But since the grown-ups were not able to understand it, I made another drawing. I drew the inside of the boa constrictor so that the grown-ups could see clearly. They always need to have things explained. My drawing number two looked like this. The grown-up's response this time was to advise me to lay aside my drawings of war constrictors, whether from the inside or the outside, and devote myself instead to geography, history, arithmetic and grammar. This is why, at the age of six, I gave up what might have been a magnificent career as a painter. I have been disheartened by the failure of my drawing number one and my drawing number two. Grown-ups never understand anything by themselves, and it is tiresome for children to be always and forever explaining things to them. So then I chose another profession and learned to pilot airplanes. I have flown a little over all parts of the world, and it is true that geography has been very useful to me. At a glance, I can distinguish China from Arizona. If one gets lost in the night, such knowledge is valuable. In the course of this life, I have had a great many encounters with a great many people who have been concerned with matters of consequence. I have lived a great deal among grown-ups. I have seen them intimately close at hand, and that has so much improved my opinion of them. Whenever I met one of them who seemed to me at all clear sight, I tried the experiment of showing him my drawing number one, which I have always kept. I could try to find out so if this was a person of true understanding. But whoever it was, he or she could always say, this is a hat. Then I would never talk to that person about war constrictors or primeval forest or stars. I could bring myself down to his level. I would talk to him about bridge and golf and politics and neckties, and the grown-up would be greatly pleased to have met such a sensible man. Hola, buenas tardes. Aquí desde la Mordida Literaria os voy a leer un capítulo de Platero y yo, de Juan Ramón Jiménez, concretamente el número 6, que se titula La Amiga. Y dice así. Si tú vinieras, Platero, con los demás niños a la amiga, aprenderías el ABC y escribirías palotes. Sabrías tanto como el burro de las figuras de cera el amigo de la sirenita del mar, que aparece coronado de flores de trapo, por el cristal que muestra a ella toda rosa, carne y oro en su verde elemento, más que el médico y el cura de palos, Platero. Pero, aunque no tienes más que cuatro años, eres tan grandote y tan poco fino. ¿En qué silita te ibas a sentar tú? ¿En qué mesa ibas tú a escribir? ¿Qué cartilla ni qué pluma te bastarían? ¿En qué lugar del corro ibas a cantar? Di, Platero, el credo. No, doña Domítila, de hábito de padre Jesús de Nazareno, morado todo con el cordón amarillo, igual que reyes, el besuguero. Te tendría, a lo mejor, dos horas de rodillas en un rincón del patio de los plátanos, o te daría con su larga caña seca en las manos, 
o se comería la carne de membrillo de tu merienda, o te pondría un papel ardiendo bajo el rabo y tan coloradas y tan calientes las orejas como se le ponen al hijo del aperador cuando va a llover. No, platero, no. Vente tú conmigo. Yo te enseñaré las flores y las estrellas. Y no se reirán de ti como de un niño torpón. Ni te pondrán cual si fueras lo que ellos llaman un burro. El gorro de los ojos grandes rieteados de anil y almagra. Como los de las barcas del río con dos orejas dobles que las tuyas.